This is a spreadsheet that's available to help you with item number five in the fiscal year 15-16 basic skills expenditure plan. There are four tabs, instructions, data entry, table for reporting, and calculations. On the instructions tab, you'll find a link which will go to this video once the video is put up. And this is the place to look for it. You'll also find a link that will go to the basic skills cohort tracker. This is where you're going to get the data to fill in the next tab, which is data entry. On this tab, you'll notice that there are a number of cells into which you can put data. In this case, these cells have already been populated with data from one of the colleges. Notice that you've got fiscal year 11-12, 12-13, 13-14, and 14-15. These are the four years of interest. Notice these items here, attempt and success. Those are terms that are used with the basic skills tracker at Datamart. There are six different types of courses that we're interested in. English writing, English reading, mathematics, ESL integrated, ESL writing, and ESL reading. And notice we have space for the four terms. Now not all colleges teach four terms, but they are available. Summer, fall, winter, and spring. And notice in the case of the ESL courses, you can go six levels below to one below. If you have level 7 or 8, please combine them with level 6. For the others, such as English writing, English reading, and mathematics, it will be levels 1 through 4. This particular college, as you can see, doesn't teach a winter term. That's fine. Also notice there's a lot of empty cells. That's understandable because not all colleges teach all basic skills courses four terms a year at all levels. You only need to put in the values for courses that you actually taught. The rest you can leave blank. You don't even need to put in zeros. In another video, I will show you how to look up these data from Datamart. Once you've put the data in, the remainder of the functions are automatic. If you go to the tab called Table for Reporting, you'll see a table that actually can be copied directly into question 5. These are the data we're looking for, and this is the analysis we're looking for. Here's the six categories again, English writing, reading, mathematics, ESL integrated, ESL writing, ESL reading. And notice we've combined the years. The older years, 11-12 and 12-13, are added together. 13-14 and 14-15, which are the newer years, are added together. And again, attempt and success. So in this case, you see there was 5,210 successes out of 7,122 attempts. When you divide 52.12 into 71.22, you get 73.15, or 73.15. And when you divide 54.72 into 77.40, you get about 70%. These are a little bit different. 11.12.13 about 73% of the students passed English writing. More recently, 13, 14, 15, it's gone down to about 70%, but we want to know if this is a significant difference. We don't want to guess. That's why we're going to use Z-scores, and these are actually built in automatically for you. This is a Z-score test of two parameters. It's done automatically. You can see the score is 3.33, and the p-value also collected a or um, calculated automatically for you is 0 .0004. Now, as a refresher, we all remember that a P level of 0 .05 or smaller, so 0 .05, 0 .04, 0 .03, 0 .02, those are all significant. Anything larger than P05 will not be considered significant. And for your convenience, we've also included a feature that will automatically interpret it for you. So looking at this from beginning to end, here's English writing. We can see that it's gone from a success rate of 73% a few years ago to 70% more recently. This is a significant finding. It's a significant de decrease. So in your fiscal year 15-16 basic skills expenditure plan, you would want to address that. What do you plan to do to try to turn that around and bring rates of success back up? Mathematics. 
3443 divided in 6129, 56.18. 3904 into 5847, 6677. Look at that, a very significant Z, a very significant P level, and interpretation, it's significant increase. So uh, in the further past, the success rate was 56%. More recently, it's 66, almost 67%. Again, you'd want to cover that in your plan. Tell us what's working and how you plan to continue to do that. A couple other ones to point out real quickly. Notice ESL integrated. It's got an insignificant P. Yet when you look at the percentages, the, former old, the older scores are 72 and a half. More recently, 64. You'd say, wow, that's a big difference. Shouldn't that be a significant decrease? Well, it would be, except for the fact that the Z-test is sensitive to the population size. And look how small it is, 40 and 34. If that was 400 and 340, this would undoubtedly be a very high, uh, very large Z-score and a very low P-level, and it'd be a significant decrease. So if you see something like that, you should still tell us, what do you plan to do to try to make sure that the ESL integrated success rate gets better. ESL writing. Now, large population, 221, 766, but it's, there's nothing there. It's not significant. Well, look carefully. It's a comparison between 77% and 78%. So the z-test has done exactly what it's supposed to do. It's told us that essentially those are about the same number. So you've got a very stable rate of success for ESL writing. ESL reading, same thing. We see that the outcome is significant decrease. So again, you'd want to address that in item number five. Tell us what you're planning to do to turn around what's gone from a 76% rate of success to a 63% rate of success. Now the nice thing about this table is it's ready for you to block and copy and paste into your report. All these calculations are done automatically. You don't need to do anything except put your numbers in over here on data entry. This table will populate automatically. Now the last tab, Calculations, is made available for those who would like to look at the actual math. These are sums of all the data that you've put in. And remember, we're adding them together. So let's move over a little bit. Here's where those years are added together. And in fact, if you compare these values right in here, they're the exact ones you just saw in the last table. Remember, 52.10 divided by 71.22 is 73%. And we looked at whether or not 73% and more recently, 70% was a significant change. We've done the z-test, we found out that it was. So all this information right here, you should recognize from the table on the, in the table for reporting tab. But there's a little bit more here also. As you continue over, you can also see in addition to your z-test and your p-scores and your interpretation, we've also included trend lines. These are very handy because what trend lines do is they tell you which direction is the data going, even if the z-test isn't significant. And finally, for those who are interested in the actual mathematics, there they are. That's the mathematics that lay behind the uh, z-test. So in conclusion, you will have access to this spreadsheet. As long as you put the data in, the rest will be done automatically. In another video, I'll explain how to pull these data from Datamart.